Hello, welcome to The Daily Office, and thanks for joining me. This is uh, Saturday, March the 17th, and today, of course, is St. Patrick's Day. Here's the commentary from the book Holy Women, Holy Men, Celebrating the Saints. Patrick uh, was born into a Christian family somewhere on the northwest coast of Britain in about the year 390. His grandfather had been a Christian priest, and his father, Calpurnius, a deacon. Calpurnius was an important official in the late Roman imperial government of Britain. It was not unusual in this post-Constantinian period for such state officials to be in holy orders. When Patrick was about 16, he was captured by a band of Irish slave raiders and he was carried off to Ireland and forced to serve as a shepherd. When he was about 21, he escaped and returned to Britain, where he was educated as a Christian. He tells us that he took holy orders as both presbyter and bishop, although no particular see is known as his at this time. A vision then called him to return to Ireland, and this he did in about the year 431. Tradition holds that Patrick landed not far from the place of his earlier captivity, near what is now known as Down Patrick. A down or a dun is a fortified hill, the stronghold of a local Irish king. He then began a remarkable process of missionary conversion throughout the country that continued in his, until his death probably in the year 461. He made his appeal to the local kings and through them to their tribes. Christianizing the old pagan religion as he went, Patrick erected Christian churches over sites already regarded as sacred, had crosses carved on old Druidic pillars, and put sacred wells and springs under the protection of Christian saints. Many legends of Patrick's Irish missionary travels possess substrata of truth, especially those telling of his conversion of the three major Irish high kings. At Armagh he is said to have established his principal church, and to this day Armagh is regarded as his primatial see of all Ireland. There are two works attributed to Patrick an autobiographical confession in which he tells us, among other things, that he was criticized by his contemporaries for a lack of learning, and a letter to Caronicus, a British chieftain. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your providence, you chose your servant Patrick to be the apostle of the Irish people, to bring those who were wandering in darkness and error to the true light, and knowledge of you. Grant us so to walk in that light, that we may come at last to the light of the everlasting life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.